After a bumpy start to the trip, it was time for Lennis and his crew, led by guide Neil Webster, to explore the beautiful Alaskan wilderness. And almost immediately, they found exactly what they were looking for. There. What's the number one thing that you'll recommend a sheep hunter do before he comes on a hunt with you? Get good optics because you spend so much time glassing and if you start getting eye strain, it's going to be really tough. And then good warm boots. Yeah, second most important thing is, is good footwear. That's your mode of travel in here and if you can't uh, get around, then you're going to be losing valuable hunting days. Well, we got up here to take a look at the, the two sheep we had been going after this morning. And just as we rounded this corner, I spotted another ram up here by itself. This is so exciting. Been spotting, this is the third ram we spotted this morning. Checking him out right now. You can see how big he is. Yeah, it's really easy to get yourself in a position when they're feeding like that. But as soon as they bed down and start glassing, wherever you are, that's where you're going to spend your rest of your day until they get up feeding again. That one's a really, really nice one. The tip of the point goes up beyond the bridge and he's starting his upward, backward arc. Yeah, that's a, that's a, you know, 36 inch plus ram. Super, super. What's our game plan to go get on him? Well, we're going to follow this uh, dry river wash. A couple more bends, get us a little bit closer, a little better angle to take a look at him. Sometimes we're able to watch them and they'll come feeding down come across and we can intercept them. Other times you just sit on them all day long until they make a mistake and then we can get on them. Super. They have pretty good nose on them. Yeah, an excellent, excellent sense of smell. And like 20 power vision, huh? Yep. Wow, better stay low. Staying low would be fairly easy to do as dull sheep are known to live as high as 10,000 feet. In some of the rockiest terrain this Alaskan mountain range has to offer. Well, opening day tomorrow for a sheep hunt. 10 o'clock right now, it's still not dark. What's the game plan for tomorrow? Well, we've got two rams up here that you found earlier in the day. One, I think, is about a three-quarter curl. The other one appears to be bigger. How much, I don't know yet. Um, from what you described, he's probably a 35, 36-inch ram, so he's in the full curl category, eight years of age or older. So we get up in the morning and make a go of it, see what we can find, locate them, and then uh, plan our stock based upon where they're at in the wind. You've hunted this canyon quite a bit. Yeah, that, that particular area where they're in, uh, they're pretty accessible. So I was pleased to see that uh, you've managed to locate some there. What does a guy look for when he's looking for a, a ram? Well, you, you wanna look for good horn mass on it, dark coloration of horns where the actual horn itself goes down to the jawline or below the jawline and then when the point is coming up it goes to the eye preferably through the eye and, and if he's starting his backward arc that's that's the ideal one but uh, if they're going just through the through the eye that'll put them in the full curl category and they have to be a full curl to be legal correct yeah that's pretty much the way we are in most of the state in this game management unit it's all f full curl rams only no used lambs or sickle horn rams are allowed to be harvested. It gets light like at 5.15, 5.30, what time are we getting going? Well, we probably want to be on our way by about 6.30 in the morning. And mm -hmm. uh, usually the, in that particular area, the rams don't surface till around 9 in the morning. And that's when the winds start shifting. So we want to be kind of up there in position, get ourselves set so we're not going to be uh, exposing ourselves too much and try to locate them and plant a stock. I can't believe how warm it was today. It's pretty warm for August 9th, isn't it? Yeah, shorts and t-shirt weather and bring your sunscreen. But it can change just that fast, can it? Yeah, oh yeah, I've had as much as six inches of snow in here in the second week of August before. If you come hunting in Alaska, prepare for it all and get you a good outfitter. Stay tuned, we'll see how our hunt turns out first thing in the morning, opening day. Well, a trick I learned from our guide, Neil, is uh, when you go out there to protect your barrel from the elements or you might stick your old barrel in the mud and once that's jammed up, you're not hunting anything. And what he recommended using is just black electrical tape, just put right over the old barrel and that will just shoot right off if you got a shot. 
and it does protect your barrel. That's about all you need, and you're good to go. Just another tip from the outfitter, Neil Webster, Bear Down Adventures. Started off early this morning, the rams were feeding. And before we could get up here, they went back to their bedding area and they sat on their perch all day long. We've been at this, what, 11 hours or 12 hours or something? Yep. Pretty much about 12 hours right now. And uh, nothing we could do today but just uh, catch up on a little snooze and, and uh, sit in the shade. It's very hot for this time of year, but it's evening. Rams are back out. What's our game plan, Neil? We're going to try to work our way along this little dry river wash and get a little bit closer to them. Try to ambush them when they come on their uh, run to start feeding for the evening. We'll be within three, 400 yards of them. They're about 900 yards away right now, so we're just going to stay behind this little rock embankment and see what happens. About 680 right now. Zooming in tight. Stay with us when Limbsaver's Outdoor America continues the exciting conclusion to Lennis's Dull Sheep Hunt in Alaska. One thing about hunting in the West, and especially Alaska, you gotta have great camouflage. Up here on this sheep hunt, we've found that the sheep have excellent vision. They say 20 power, and they can pick out movement so easily. The new Bill Jordan's Max One, thumbs up. It works great in Alaska, and everywhere in the West we've used it. It's the best camo we've ever used. About 450 yards away. 450 yards doesn't look like much when our cameras are zoomed all of the way in, but when you pull all the way out, you get a glimpse of just what Lennis was up against. They're climbing up. Next time he turns broadside, I'm going to shoot. Bottom one, bottom ram. OK, here we go. Yeah. 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 Got him! Yeah, that's what I did to you! Wow. We waited, I don't know, we've been after this ram for about 14 hours now. And uh, couldn't be happier, he's a full curl ram. Then they all got to join me on this hunt. And uh, we've been going out to the range practicing a whole bunch. And uh, lucky to have good equipment. Bill Wiseman, thanks for the rifle. Hornaday supplied the ammo that I've been practicing at 500, 600 yards. I didn't want to shoot that far unless I had to. That was about 465 yards right there. And uh, couldn't be happier. It's a great ram. Had a great rest. And uh, I tell you, if you want to see the sheep, go to Bear Down Adventures with Neil Webster. Can't wait to get up there and see my ram. We got to cross the river before we can go get him. All right. One shot, that's what I like. Grab my arm. I think he's right up over the hill right there. He's a nice one too. Wow. You got something. Well, that's what they look like, huh? Whoa, look at that, honey. Is that incredible or what? My uh, Alaskan adventure couldn't be any better. What a beautiful animal. I give the credit to Neil Webster from Bear Down Adventures. He runs a heck of an operation for uh, brown bear, grizzly, uh, doll sheep, and several other species as well. If you're looking for a count combo hunt or just a doll sheep hunt, give Neil a call. We shot this nice beautiful ram here within about a mile of his camp and uh, his accommodation second to none and his cooks are really good and, and that packer strongest guy i ever hunted with i hope